Hi, in this lecture I'm going to show you some things about Geth. Geth is the Go Ethereum command line interface for running a full Ethereum node. It's implemented in Go. In Geth you can mine real Ether. You can transfer funds between addresses. You can create contracts and send transactions. Or you can do much much more. Basically it's the command line interface for the things you can do in Mist. To install Geth, you simply download it. You can download it from the GitHub page from Go Ethereum, which you find at github.com slash ethereum slash go dash ethereum. I have already downloaded Geth for Windows. It's a single executable file. In order to run Geth, you would have to open a command line interface. I've opened already a command line interface and navigated to the right directory. To start Geth, you can simply type Geth, but it will not allow you any interaction. In order to interact with the JavaScript console, you would either have to type geth console, which will start a process geth in the background and attach to it. Or you can type geth attach, which attaches to another running geth process. Right now there is no process running, so this fails. Let's start Geth. This is a non-interactive Geth console. It will just start the process. Let's open another command line interface and attach to it. Now in Geth you have a JavaScript interface. The JavaScript wiki is pretty big and extensive. It explains everything from how to access the JavaScript console, to changing the verbosity level of logging, and a lot more things. In this tutorial I will explain how you can start mining, and how you can create new accounts. Have a look yourself into the wiki. In the lower part of the wiki, there is a whole chapter about mining. If you go back to your JavaScript console and you simply want to start mining with one thread, you can do this by typing miner.start and then for the number of threads you want to start mining for, for example two. And Geth will automatically start mining for your coinbase. The address of your coinbase is usually the account you created first. You can check this by typing eth.coinbase. Personal.listaccounts gives you all your accounts. In this case, the first account is the coinbase. I will stop the miner again. Simply type miner stop. Now let's have a look how we can create a new account. In the first section of the wiki, you can find the personal section. Personal.list accounts shows you all of your accounts. Personal.new accounts creates a new account. I will go ahead and create a new account without typing a password. I will type in my password and repeat my password. A new account is created and it appears when I type in personal.list accounts. Now let's try to send some ether. I'm going to send some ether from one account to another account. The account I'm going to send ether to is the account I just created. The account the ethers are coming from is one I'm going to choose. Let's have a look at the accounts in the system. Let's type personal. 
list accounts. You see I have already a lot of accounts in the system. I'm going to check the balances for them. I'm going to check the balance for the first account first. For this, I'm going to use another function. It's called eth.getBalance. I can give the getBalance method a parameter, which is one account. I give it the first account. My first account has a balance of zero. Balances and transfers are working in Vay. If you want to convert Vay into something else, or Ether into Vay, for example, you can use web free dot to Vay and then the amount and then from what? Let's say one Ether into Vay. You can learn about the different sizes and names in another lecture. Let's have a look at the second account. The second account has probably enough funds to transfer some ether from this account to the account I just created. First, I have to unlock the account. I'm going to type personal.unlock account and then I choose the account I want to unlock. Geth is going to ask me for a passphrase. My account is unlocked. Now I'm going to check the balance of the last account I have in the system. The account, which is the last account in the system, has a balance of zero. I'm going to transfer one Ether to this account now. To transfer funds from one account to another, I'm using another function, which is called sendTransaction. It's eth.sendTransaction. SendTransaction takes one JavaScript object. The JavaScript object should at least consist of three parameters. One is from the account I want to send funds from. The other one is to, the account I want to send funds to. And the value. The value should be in Vay. Let's close the brackets. And let's see what happens. Send transaction will return a transaction ID. It cannot return if the transaction is successful or not, because this happens at a later time. Let's have a look at the pending transactions. This transaction is still pending. I can copy and paste the transaction ID and have a look on pages like Etherscan or Etherchain and see how the transaction develops. The transaction is not yet found. It still has to be mined. In the meantime, I can open my wallet mist. The wallet will automatically attach to the GoEtherium process which is running in the background. Mist already shows that the transaction was completed. From my second account, I transferred one Ether to the account number six. Now I'm going to transfer the funds back. Also, the array for the pending transactions is empty now. To transfer the funds back, I'm going to use Mist. This is going to demonstrate you that it doesn't really matter what kind of UI or program you use to transfer funds between accounts. First, I have to copy the address I want to transfer funds to. And then I choose send. And then I choose account number six, which is the account I just transferred the ethers to. And I choose the address of the account I want to transfer the ethers to. And I choose one ether. 
I don't want to add any data at this point. This is something we're going to cover in other lectures. And the fee is going to the miners who are making sure the transaction is going through. I have to enter the password, which I use during the account setup. And I'm going to send the transaction. Unfortunately, because I have to pay a certain fee, I don't have enough funds. I can cancel this. Instead of choosing a concrete amount, I'm just choosing to send everything. MIST is going to do the calculations. I'm entering the password again. And now I just have to wait a few seconds. In the meantime, I'm going to show you how the transaction looks like on EtherChain that we did before. On EtherChain, you see the details, which block the transaction was mined, from which address to which address, which value was sent. Additionally, you see some other data. Now our account 6 is empty again and our account 2 has the funds back. Also, there are no more pending transactions at the moment. In other tutorials we will learn more how to use Geth in order to connect from a website to the blockchain. Thank you for watching this lecture.